Hello, everybody. Welcome to Women in Crypto, where we discover the future of money, markets, and payments, and how to thrive in the new digital economy. We have Justina Osowska with us. She is the CEO and founder of Women in Blockchain Canada. Welcome, Justina. Hi, thank you for having me. Well, thank you for being on Women in Crypto. So how are you? How's everything going over there in Toronto? Well, actually, I'm in Ottawa, but it's oh, going Ottawa. quite well. Uh, Canada, so uh, it's good. We're all connecting. Uh, everything is going pretty well. I mean, despite the COVID situation, I w I'm healthy and happy and ready to, uh, to still uh, evangelize um, what we're doing here. Oh, excellent. And so what's one of the latest projects that you're keeping up with in blockchain and crypto? Well, I think there's so much out there. I mean, there's so much happening in the whole space. Uh, so for me personally, as you may know, I take care of doing educational events. So Women in Blockchain Canada does host events. We do it with the city of Ottawa and Ottawa. Um, but now we're going to go virtual. So we're looking to have that done uh, probably for October. And then um, probably going to uh, work alongside a futurist to help them promote um, various themes for their conference. So interviewing people for that and uh, yeah, just keeping up with what's going on in the space, I guess, through those different channels. Yeah, absolutely. So you're uh, definitely involved in the networking and evangelizing blockchain and crypto. Well, with everything going digital, uh, we see a need to actually get the word out there. So what could you tell our listeners who might be new to crypto and why we are all evangelizing this stuff? <laughs> well, I think there's so many things. Uh, and I, I guess I'll start with why I think like it's so important. I, um, well, crypto, I think, is the money of the people. So the first thing I would say is like, you know, uh, there's a lot of places where banking is difficult. And I think it's just going to allow for people to really like have that one-to-one -one connection without necessarily having an intermediary, but also like just being in the blockchain space, it's uh, I think it's a human rights thing. You know, what they're able to do with this technology is, you know, look at land deeds and make that more decentralized, uh, use it within healthcare to make uh, authentic, like there's so much fraud in the healthcare uh, system in terms of medication. So I think it's not just, it's, it affects, it will, this technology is going to affect everyone and pretty much in every way possible. You will not be able to get away from it. And I think cryptocurrency is just kind of like the foundation where it all starts, which is basically, you know, giving people access to a money that does not discriminate against them. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you with it. It's the people's money. Uh, so in the States, we have a banking for all act where they're, proposing the U.S. digital dollar, and we have coin shortages at, at, at a lot of the stores. I heard about that, yes. Are you seeing that in Canada as well? Uh, no, I'm not seeing that in Canada because I don't know if you're aware, but Canada is like one of the highest use of debit card places in the world. So we've already been mostly digital. Cash is not a big thing in Canada. In fact, a lot of places aren't accepting cash right now. Yeah. But I think it just proves right now like, the need for us to go, this is, this is where this is headed. Like, it's pretty clear to me, you know, right now. Um, and the fact that the money is so divisible, it's decentralized, the ease of transfer that people have with it, there's just so many, it's so competitive, you know? And I think the adoption is coming, it's gonna come in different ways, but um, in the last two weeks, Bitcoin has been trending on Twitter twice. Like when I'm on my Twitter feed, I go onto the side and I see this is trending. So I think it's incredible. I think we're on our way uh, and yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, it's definitely a movement. It's, it's, it's a movement in a positive way and uh, accommodating the digital economy. Boy, we just did turn digital pretty quickly, didn't we? Uh, <laughs> it's unbelievable. And so last year I met you at a physical conference. And so how is that affecting your work now this year? A lot, I would say, because like, first of all, I think like, um, 
it's been kind of a downtime for me. I think like for the last two years with founding the organization and doing a lot of events, it's given me a time to kind of slow down and really um, see what I wanted to do within the space and take the next move. So right now I've sort of been just working on figuring out like um, the new way of doing things. So in, in my case, you know, hosting it on a digital platform that's accessible. So am I going to have it on zoom? Is that the best option? Yeah. And then of course, like figuring out the speakers and all that. So, but I mean, it's kind of, it's been so different that I'm just still, uh, yeah, I'm working on that transition right now. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. And so with everybody that's still working, they're working from home and, uh, that moves us more into being digitized. Do you think that we're going to have an easier time to evangelize digital currency? I would say so. I don't think it's even like a question anymore, but I think it's more of like, what are people going to do with their time? If you're looking at it, what's happening right now in the world and people are sitting more in front of their computers and having to stay home, we're going to look at an uprise in virtual reality, gaming and digital assets. So that and cryptocurrency go hand in hand. So now what you've just done is you've just given this a gateway. You have lots of gamers out there. I actually think one of the biggest pushes for crypto will be through gaming and also from regulatory changes in terms of monetary policies that we're seeing people are just stacking, stacking cryptocurrency because they're not sure what's going to happen with the economy. So they're using it as a hedge. So, right. um, I mean, if that's, I think it's just an interesting thing to see, you know what I mean? Like, it, I feel like it's coming at us in so many angles. I don't like it's, yeah, it's kind of incredible. Like, and I think like right now, what I'm really interested in are the NFTs and people building in cyberspace. And like, if people can't go and try on clothes, but they can go try that on digitally. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what we may be seeing or like people going to search for houses, but then having like views that they see like virtual tours. Yeah, absolutely the movement towards AI in a virtual reality. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so tell me about women for blockchain in Canada and how you got started with the organization. So I, uh, I actually went to a couple conferences myself. I went to Futurist. Um, I went to a conference in Atlanta. I went to a conference in Ottawa. I didn't really see a lot of um, female participants. So while I was in Toronto, actually at the Futurist, I was able to fundraise for starting my organization. And then Gowling, the Canadian law firm, WLG, Gowling WLG, they said that they'll help me um, get started uh, in terms of being my lawyers as well for being a non-for-profit. So I got really lucky. I got a lot of support from the community coming together from that conference and uh and just supporting me in so many different ways and also then you know working with the city uh in ottawa and them giving me the space and and sponsorship for hosting these events i feel really and truly grateful for everything that's come along and um yeah it's just been a great journey uh it's uh, a lot of people believe in the cause we're you know we're here to educate we're here to uplift women and to understand what's going on but we also have a lot of male participants at our events so uh it's usually focused on different topics i've had events that focus on uh digital currency but i've also had events that talk about social impact um mostly i would say we we focus around uh the social impact of this technology uh, hosted them in Ottawa and Montreal collaboratively with other startups. So I uh, work with start like basically um, Bayview Yard, which is a startup center in Ottawa. I worked with startup Montreal in Montreal. Uh, work with a company called Time Chain. They they collab uh, collaborated with us on the uh, on the event in Montreal. So everything's just been coming together pretty organically because I think so many people um, want to our support this technology, but also to support the education um, part of it so that more women can come into the space Absolutely. and get, you know, get information about it. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, obviously you're affecting the community by bringing uh, awareness to it uh, and women in blockchain supports women getting in technology. So why do you think, and this is a general question, women hesitate in getting into technology? 
Well, I think that has to do a lot with society. You yeah. know, like when the people are growing up, a girl gets a Barbie and the, and the guy gets a toy car, you yeah. know, and we're not really like, we're not like these, uh, it all starts in the home. And then, you know, like people are kind of groomed to go one way or another. And I think it's, I don't know. I think there's a lot of factors. Part of it is also like, yeah, I think it's a lot of it is societal. A lot of it is confidence driven. Ottawa did a whole research on that actually with uh, the University of Ottawa with Toronto. And a lot of it is also to do with self-esteem. You know, yeah. like how do women negotiate in the workplace? There's so many things that are underlying it. I think it's like simplistic to say what is the one cause. Yeah. But I would say definitely like there's the part of society, uh, bringing the home, the schooling system and all that. And like generally how um, what women, I don't know. I don't know what, what the world would be like, but if you can see it, then you can be it. And what we aim to do is allow for women to see that there are women doing this and thriving and really doing well in the space. So if they can see it, then they can be it. And we have to start it that way. Yeah, absolutely. And I think with this new generation being born into technology, you know, they're not getting the Barbie and the truck anymore. They're all getting, whether they're a boy. They're getting truck, iPads. They're getting iPads and iPhones. And uh, so that equalizes the technology factor, uh, which will really help with taking blockchain or, and, and having more women get involved in blockchain in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's Absolutely. Good. Yeah. So we just have to, um, you know, promote it and keep educating out there. So. Yeah, I think one of the most rewarding things is when I do an event and then have people come a second time and they're like, you know, thanks to you, I, you know, I got interested in this and like your events have helped me get into the space more. Now I'm bringing my friends and that's how it all starts. It's like a domino effect. Yeah. And it trickles out. So, yeah, absolutely. And uh, you had a product you wanted to share uh, so somebody, let's just say that we're talking to somebody who's maybe 18 years old, a, a girl that's, in, and she's just getting to know cryptocurrency. Um, what, what would you tell her that she needed to do to get her first cryptocurrency? Well, I, um, Women in Blockchain Canada works with Edge Wallet. So Edge Wallet is one of our sponsors uh, for our event. So if uh, people are interested, they can definitely uh, download Edge Wallet on their phones. Um, and at the end, I'll circulate the link to the download and um, they can use a referral and then they can have a little bit of crypto for their spending when they get started. Oh, that's very nice. Now, is Edge Wallet a hard wallet or a soft wallet? So Edge Wallet is a non-custodial wallet. Non-custodial. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. But it, you can have it on your phone or you can have it on your desktop. Yeah. And so, uh, and also there's... Uh, uh, quite a few apps that they can actually just transfer their nation's currency directly into cryptocurrency. Is that something that Edge Wallet would allow them to do? That's a great question. Um, that's a really good question. I think like they allow for the purchase of cryptocurrency, but let me, let me verify okay. if they allow for that or if you have to actually pre-buy it and then send it to your wallet. Well, what's nice is we'll provide the link below so anybody that's listening can actually uh, download that wallet and then be able to um, purchase cryptocurrency either from a friend or from their bank account directly, right? Exactly. So. All right. Well, great, great. And so what's, uh, what's next? What's next? That's a great question. I think <laughs> what's next is really um, continuing to do the educational component I think that's a good question also because of where I want to, I want to grow within the space. Um, I think I would like to move on to research as well, a little bit perhaps, and a little bit more media work as well. Uh, and maybe combine that just like what you're doing is interviewing people who are in the space, what they're doing, things like that. I think what we are focusing too much on right now is why people aren't getting in the space instead of focusing on like what, the people that got into the space are doing right you know what are these success stories you're always hearing like oh there's only you know 
the, the percentage is so low and why aren't women buying crypto and that like, but why aren't we asking like, well, the ones who did what are like, what they got you there and then like working on that. So I think like definitely that could be part of like the research that I look into. And yeah. I want to also understand more of what's going on in Canada. I think like, um, I would like to influence um, also from that perspective in terms of what's going on here and right. see like, you know, what is like, what are the Canadian policies and like, and educate Canadians about that. Yeah, absolutely. Because the policies are all going to change as we, we shift into the new economy here. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, and that's going to be important to, to educate, keep educating. Uh, so that's good stuff, Justina. And uh, well, you know, we're going to see a lot of changes in the new economy as uh, crypto continues to take a climb up with what we're seeing. I, Absolutely. And I think more and more so um, because people are going to get that curiosity now. Because yeah. I think before it was labeled as, you know, like, what is this? This isn't even real. But now people can go to banks and buy it. Right. And that's a huge step, I think, in the right direction. So people will have to make policy on it. I'm going to probably work with Gowling and see if we can do more. I do a lot of, we also do sessions on the regulations in Canada. Okay. So we have the lawyers come in and inform people like what the regulations are around, uh, what's going on with uh, the digital currency. Yeah. And so are Canadian banks uh, open to uh, per, uh, individuals buying cryptocurrency or just certain banks? Um, there, that is not something that's happening currently. I've heard that that is something that's happening in Germany, to my knowledge, at this point of time. Um, so I'm not, I'm not exactly sure how Canada is going to proceed on that. But we do have Canadian exchanges, so I believe Canadians can send their money over to yeah. these exchanges and then buy the currency from there. But I don't think at this time you can purchase it at a bank. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think we'll see what happens. We'll yeah. see what happens moving forward. But I think most governments are going to uh, have to look at these kinds of policies exactly. Oh, absolutely. And uh, I was impressed at the Futurist Conference seeing so many ATM machines. Well, that's the thing about Canada. It's the ATMs are everywhere. I can go walk down the street five minutes from my house if I really? wanted to. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we don't see them a lot in the States. Not too many. But uh, they're growing. Uh, I... <laughs> That's the thing. I think like it's just becoming more normalized right now. So I think we'll just have to see what the policymakers end up doing. But I think Canada did publish, the Bank of Canada did publish an article about Bitcoin and how many Canadians own it and like how it's being used. And, and they're looking, you know, to model the Canadian digital, digital dollar. They have that on their website if certain things are fulfilled. So, yeah. Absolutely. You know, we'll have to see what happens because of COVID and how the government reacts. Right, right. Could be a cashless society sooner than later, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. I took a photo recently and I posted it online that said no cash accepted. So yeah, yeah that's what we're seeing too. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to keep in touch as things change because, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be important to to get the word out there and help those that are getting in the, in the space too. Mm -hmm. So that's any, why we're here. Yeah, absolutely. Any, any advice or anything else you'd like to share before we end our time here? Ah, I think like the biggest thing is to, for people to really uh, enjoy what we have right now because the, you know, we don't know what the future looks like ever. So I always say live in the present moment. Yes. That's my little life motto. And also like, get educated, do your own research, find out, you know, find out what's going on in the space, find out the companies, find out what they're doing. And with that, I think people can make solid decisions. Yeah, absolutely. Very good advice. Very good advice. Thank you, Justina, for your time today. Thank you so much, Lori. Well, thanks for being here. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in and listening to Women in Crypto. We'll see you online. Bye-bye.